Check out, he's a host of a podcast called the Magical Misery Tour. Give it up for Jesse Dram, everybody. Hey, everybody, how you doing? Um, really thinking about buying a gun. What do you guys think? Good idea, bad idea? No? I, really, I, I have the same anxieties about buying a gun as I do about buying, like, a dildo. Because I know with enough sad, lonely nights, I'm probably just going to end up turning it on myself. <laughs> a friend of mine told me that he was abandoned by his French-Canadian father. Isn't that sad? He said he was abandoned by his French-Canadian father. He wasn't even a real dad to him. So he kind of had like a faux pas. <laughs> ah. We're getting infinitely less classy after that, so lower your expectations. Um, <laughs> I come from a very, very white trash background, uh, very, very low class. My dad was in biker gangs and shit. When I was 12, my dad confessed to me on a drunken night that he was pretty sure that he killed somebody in a bar fight in his 20s and never got caught for it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I kicked him in the head and he never got up and I just stopped going to that bar. Yeah, it's an important talk between father and son. Uh, I asked him how he felt about that, the fact that he probably took a life. He said, okay, well, I probably took somebody out of the world, but, like, I had you, so... Even Stevens? Yeah, that's, that's great. That's great to know I come from a man who considers, like, murder and child-rearing the equivalent of take a penny, leave a penny. Good to know. I feel like a lot of white trash just comes straight from the fashion. Uh, I only saw my father in a suit twice in his life. Once was his funeral, and the other one was a sentencing. Yeah, both times he was carried out against his will. And, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying to change it up. I'm trying to. You can see I'm dressed pretty nice tonight. I'm away from my roots. If I'm honest, this is way less of a wardrobe and more of a disguise because you can't heal that shit. Uh, it, it just, it's deep in your DNA when you come from that kind of low class. It, I could have a tuxedo on, and if I walk too close to a Walmart, the sleeves will rot off and an Aerosmith symbol will just <laughs> form in the middle of my chest. The one major improvement I've managed to do, I no longer wear a wallet chain. Thank you. I think I deserve applause for that. Because that's big, because that's, uh, especially with like a biker dad, that's like my birthright. I'm surprised he didn't like give it to me on my 13th birthday. You're a man now, join the tribe. The big thing with a wallet chain is it's supposed to make it harder for you to be pickpocketed while at the same time advertising that you had nothing worth stealing in the first place. Uh, I got away with my Hot Topic gift card. I don't know what I'm doing, but there goes Christmas. <laughs> uh, I did the online dating thing for a while. You date a lot, you find out you definitely have a type. I realized every girl I ever dated had two things in common. They were all bisexual, and they all had suicide attempt scars. So non-committal overall is what I'm getting at there. That's a sad one. It's okay to not laugh at that. It's true, though. Yeah. I didn't have a lot of date. I, I, I realized doing that, I have the sexual confidence of like a flat earther. Like, I think I'm perfectly fuckable, but it's only in spite of the mountains of evidence the world throws at me every day. And a few clearly unstable weirdos online help me keep that delusion going another day. This is a true story about online dating. Uh, I once went out on a date and hooked up with a very charming, very pretty, very nice homeless girl. Yeah. Uh, turns out, you know, there's like uh, low-income government phones, those Obama phones, you can get dating apps on those. So, you know, as much sincerity as a white guy can muster, legit, thanks Obama. Fuck, man. They said he wasn't looking out for the working-class white man. Hooked me up with a homeless blowjob. I'll take that any day. Any economist will tell you that's the number one sign of a bull market. Trump doesn't believe in that. Trump believes in trickle-down pussy economics. That doesn't work. Was to grab it all for the 1%, not redistribute, man. So, I'm a romantic, in case you couldn't tell. Trying to put that out there. And I like, I like a lot of romantic movies, but uh, I think there's one that we need to just forget about collectively as a culture, and that's the movie Titanic. Does anybody still like that movie all these years later? 
That movie ruined every girl I've dated from like 13 to now with their romantic expectations. And it's just, it's not romantic. There's romance in there, but it gets forgotten. Does anybody remember what Rose does in that movie after Jack dies? Don't worry, they only spent like 25 seconds on it. She goes to America and she just marries some guy, some schlub, who wasn't the love of her life, didn't paint her like a French whore, didn't take her down to Steerix to party with his ethnic buddies. But you know what she does do with this guy? Uh, achieves all her goals and dreams in life, rides a horse, rides a roller coaster, lives to die an old woman warm in her bed. This poor son of a bitch does not get a name in this movie. That's the romantic story I want to see. You know why? Because this poor son of a bitch had to hear about Jack <laughs> for six, six decades. Can you imagine? Jack wouldn't have made me live in a townhouse. Really? The syphilitic poet who crawled on the ship like a rat was gonna have good credit in your fantasy. Okay. Every time he gave her a necklace or jewelry for an anniversary or whatever, she just rolled her eyes. Didn't know why. Didn't know there was a diamond the size of a chihuahua skull in a shoebox in a closet rattling against the kid's baby teeth. Yeah, we all have half billion dollar sentimental objects. That's fine. We didn't almost lose the house three times. That's fine. I like to imagine the end of that movie where it implies that she dies and then she's back on the Titanic and she's young again and everyone's there and it's Titanic heaven, I guess. And up at the top of the steps is young Jack and she goes up and they kiss and everybody claps. And five feet off camera is her husband of 60 years who's been waiting in the afterlife for her, weeping because he's been stood up at the eternity prom for a guy she spent a weekend with once. This is the most romantic movie of our generation. No, it's the story Grandma fucked a hobo on a boat once. I'm sorry. I'm Jesse Tram. You've been great. Bye.